We are three days away from the NFL draft. It's going to be a huge week in the NFL. We're going to see a lot of different reports, rumors going around as we get closer and closer to draft night. I am pumped. I am excited. I will be dropping a lot, of, again, a lot of Giants draft content. I've been saying it for the past two weeks. It's a fact. I'll be dropping a lot of Giants draft content. I will be having my five round mock draft for the New York Giants on Wednesday, the day before draft night. Tomorrow, we should also be having me predict the picks before the New York Giants make their pick. So I'm going to give you guys who I think is going to be on the board when the Giants go to pick at pick 25. But in this video, I want to give you guys my New York Giants big board, you know, draft board, whatever you want to call it. My top 10 guys who are my guys at pick 25. Got a lot to get into. So let's get right into this video. So my number one guy on my New York Giants draft board is a can't miss prospect if he was to be there at 25, which is why he's number one, because I don't see him really being there at 25. He's just that good. It's Joey Porter Jr., cornerback out of Penn State. I would love for him to fall at 25. If he falls at 25, even though I've been, you know, a big, you know, Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison guy, you know, been a big guy on just making sure we get one of these, you know, top four wide receivers. I'm taking Joey Porter over those four guys. I, I really am. I'm taking him over Jackson Smith and Jigba. I'm taking him over Quentin Johnston. I'm taking him over Zay Flowers and Jordan Addison. I don't see him being there at 25. I also said that he could be a guy that we possibly trade up for. That's how high I am on Joey Porter Jr. Number two on my draft board is Jordan Addison, wide receiver out of USC. As a fellow guy who name is Jordan, I love me some Jordan Addison. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's my number one guy, as you know, as a guy that could be that 25. Jordan Addison is my guy. I hope he's there. He's the best route runner in the class. You know, though he doesn't have the, you know, the, the size of your prototypical XY receiver, like another guy who we're going to get into later on does have. I just see his route running. He's a lethal route runner. He can beat you in all levels of the field. He can stretch the field. Though he doesn't have, you know, top-notch speed, he does have speed to beat, you know, defenses deep. And, you know, he's my number one guy. When we're talking about who I want as a wide receiver, Jordan Addison is that. As a guy who I think, you know, is going to be mocked, who could be there, who's my pick at 25, it is Jordan Addison, wide receiver at USC. But number three, my number three player on my Giants draft board is Zay Flowers, wide receiver out of Boston College. Now, I know people say he's going to get thrown into the slide in the NFL. I I've been saying this. He was the first guy I mocked to the Giants, you know, before free agency, before the combine. This guy is an outside wide receiver. He is an outside wide receiver. He played outside wide receiver at Boston College, and he was very, very productive in his last year there. I'm talking about a guy after the catch. Lethal can make guys miss after the catch, and though he has a 5'9, 180 type of frame, some people say it's not the biggest, it's not. He has that dog mentality, and that's what I wrote, you know, in my notes about Zay Flowers. He has that dog mentality. Yeah, I'm not the biggest guy, but if I gotta go up there and catch up with two people, that's what I'm gonna do. I love Zay Flowers. I see Zay Flowers going over Jordan Addison. I love Zay Flowers as a player, I love him as a prospect. I know he's not the biggest guy, but I don't care. This guy plays like a, you know, a guy that's six foot three, like a Quentin Johnson. He plays like that. He plays more tougher than Quentin Johnson. Um, I just love Zay Flowers. And now my number four prospect on my Giants draft board is Deontay Banks, cornerback out of Maryland. We're talking about a guy here again, plays, you know, with a savviness. We're talking about a guy that would fit the Giants defense as that man cornerback. You throw him on the island. He was a vocal leader, you know what I'm saying, at Maryland. He was a very, you know, I guess you say outspoken type of guy. He's one of those players that's going to talk a lot. That's going to show a lot of energy, you know, good strength at the position. There's plays where, you know, when he's pressing wide receivers that, he, you know, he throws them off their whole route. Stuff like that, I like to see. I really do like to see stuff like that. Um, I think he's a guy that, you know, if he was to be there at 25, he's in that norm of, yeah, we can, we could def, I could definitely just taking him. Definitely. I love myself some Deontay Banks. But number five, number five is another wide receiver. It's Quentin Johnson, wide receiver out of TCU. Um, he's a guy that, you know, when we were getting into really the draft after the season, Quentin Johnson was wide receiver one. He was definitely wide receiver one. Some people have seen it as overhyped. And then, you know, as we got closer and closer to the draft, we get to the combine, you know, people are starting to look you know, at more film on these prospects. He has fallen. His stock has fallen. 
He's a guy that, you know, was at first the wide receiver one. Now people say, is he wide receiver four? Is he a first round draft pick? Some people say he might fall to the second round. I still like Quentin Johnston. You know, when we're talking about all the wide receivers for the Giants, preferably, he has the size that the Giants need. He is six foot three, 200 something pounds. He has the prototypical X wide receiver build. And he's a boomer bust guy for me. If he, you know, booms, if he, you know, does reach his potential, we're talking about a guy that's six foot three with elite speed, not elite speed, but very, very top notch speed, good rackability, and still has the size to at points go up and get those 50 50 balls. But that's the question can he do that? He is six foot three, 200 something pounds, but he doesn't play like that. Now, if he was to end up playing like that in the NFL, that is, you know, you're getting yourself a demigod at wide receiver with his size and speed. So, um, I like Quentin Johnston. His stock has kind of fallen ever since the draft, you know, ever since the season ended. Um, after the college football season ended, his stock has kind of fallen as Jackson Smith and Jig, but Zay Flowers, those guys' stock has risen in my opinion. But um, I got him as my fifth, you know, ranked prospect on my Giants big board. Now, my sixth guy is a guy that I don't hear a lot of Giants fans talking about. He's starting to get some hype around, you know, being at pick 25, but I really do think he is in play. We haven't spoke about him a lot. It's Brian Branch, safety out of Alabama. This guy is a stud. This guy is an absolute stud. We're talking about a guy here that we're looking at his position. He might be an elite prospect. He might be an elite prospect. He's a day one starter, has the versatility of being a strong safety and playing in the slot. So are we getting, you know, an outside cornerback? No, but we know for a fact that we have a guy that we could throw in the slot and can be dominant, hard hitting, you know, secure tackler, versatile, you know, standing at six foot 190, elite prospect. He might just be an elite prospect at his position. And it's not a lot of players that we can say are an elite prospect in this draft class. So I think he's a sleeper. I think he's a guy that when we get closer and closer to the draft night, a lot of people just start getting warmed up to the you know fact that we might just go out and get Brian Branch. We lost Julian Love over the offseason. He goes to Seattle. We haven't really made a signing or a trade or anything like that that has really you know replaced him. Brian Branch could be that replacement. We might end up with two Alabama safeties in the secondary with Brian Branch and Xavier McKinney. So my sixth Ranked prospect on my Giants big board is Brian Branch. Now let's get into my seven through 10 prospects on my big board. At number seven, I got Emmanuel Forbes, cornerback out of Mississippi State. You look at the playmaking ability, it's amazing. You look at you know the interceptions, you know the ability to take these interceptions to the crib. I think he has the most pick sixes in college football history. That is great. You know, the mirroring ability is great. You know, the the um he what he played man and zone at Mississippi State. You don't gotta worry about you know him being a strictly a zone corner, strictly a man corner. You don't gotta worry about that. It's the size. It's the size. It's you know the build. Do you take the shot on that in the first round is the question. Second round, I would be all aboard. If Emmanuel Forrest for some reason is there at pick 57 in the second round and the Giants haven't already drafted a cornerback in the first round. I would be all aboard taking that shot on him at pick 57. I like Emmanuel Forbes. I think Emmanuel Forbes is a great player. And, you know, I just think, you know, just that ability to make these plays. You know, he's not the fastest, but he has these long strides to catch up and stay on wide receivers. I like it. And if he was to be the pick at 25, I wouldn't hate it. The big question is, the red flag is the size and the build and the frame. But I do like Emmanuel Forbes as a prospect, which is why I have him as my seventh ranked prospect on my Giants big board. Number eight, John Michael Schmidt, center out of Minnesota. Let's take a look at this. Let's go into the scenario. The top four wide receivers are off the board. Addison, uh, JSN, Quentin Johnson, Zay Flowers. Deontay Banks is off the board. Joey Porter Jr. off the board. You're stuck right there. You're looking at, you know, what position do we go? At that point, you're not really locked to get those guys that a lot of Giants fans have been wanting. John Michael Schmidt just might be the pick for the Giants right there. You're getting a guy that is plug and play. He is 24 years old, but one thing he has over any giant on the roster is the experience at that position. He is way better than Ben Bredesen will be at center this year. He's way better than what Jack Anderson will be at center this year. I love John Michael Schmitz as a prospect. I already gave you guys what I think is going to happen. Go check out, you know, my uh, bold prediction video I made a couple of days ago about John Michael Schmitz and, you know, the second round, all that good stuff. I love John Michael Schmitz as a prospect. Plug and play. Baby Brock Lesnar is my guy. 
And, you know, depending on how the board falls, I think he might just be the pick at 25, even though I've been against taking a center, you know, in, you know, in the first round, right? But I do like John Michael Schmidt as a prospect. I have ranked number eight. Number nine, I got Osiris Torrance, uh, guard out of Florida. Now, this is a pick where... If the Giants go with it, I wouldn't be mad. We're talking about a guy here that is elite at, you know, run blocking. You know, him and Evan Neal on that right side would be insane. Those are two hog mollies right there, right? You know, good strength. You know, just putting you, you know, putting guys in a phone box, letting them go up against Osiris Torrance. He's a brick wall. I really do like him as a prospect. Now, do the Giants actually end up taking him? I don't see it happening. I don't see the Giants, you know, using a first round pick at, you know, interior offensive line at the guard position. Second round, maybe third round for sure, but um, I do like still. I still do like Osiris Torrance as a prospect. I just don't think the Giants would go there, but I do like him. I have ranked number nine on my big board. So to end our, you know, our video to give out our final prospect at number ten on our Giants big board. It's not a guy that you know has been really highly mocked. He's not a popular pick at twenty five. It's Tyreek Stevenson, cornerback out of Miami. And one thing I can't take away from this guy, one thing that I just watch and, you know, it really pops off is the, physic the physicality that this guy plays with. He plays like he wants to make a play every single down. And when it's time for him to make a tackle, he's going to do that. He played man at Miami, good athlete, good speed, physical. You know, he's just not going to give up on a play. I like myself some Tyreek Stevenson. And again, he's in the boat to where if, you know, the top four wide receivers are off the board, the top four cornerbacks are off the board, Deontay Banks, Joey Porter Jr., Christian Gonzalez, Devon Witherspoon, etc. That is a guy that I think could be the pick for the New York Giants. And I would not be mad at it at all. I really wouldn't. That physicality that he brings, just it's something that would get a defense hyped up. I really would like it. And I'm pretty sure Week Martindale would like it too. But um, that's really it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Go down below in the comment section. Give me your thoughts on this big board. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know down below in the comment section. But if you are a new subscriber, if you you know if this is your first video, you still made it here, welcome to the channel. It's going to be a lot of Giants content on the channel this week. It's draft week. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. And I can't wait to cover the Giants this week, man. It's going to be a big week. It's draft week, baby. So we're all lit. We're all happy. But uh, if you did enjoy this video, like I said, leave a like, comment, hit the subscribe button. And until then, it's been your boy Jay Dimes, and we are out. Go Giants. Peace.